Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share with your fellow trading colleagues if you find the content that I provide um, on my YouTube channel useful. So um, getting into this week's fundamental and uh, analysis and risk sentiment analysis and we're going to start off on the US uh, jobs recovery uh, falter as virus surge snaps hiring streak. Why is that important? Because jobs are um, a, a, a sign, I guess, a, a, a leading indicator of the economy. So very disappointing numbers, the payroll, uh, US payroll dropped 140,000 amid December virus surge. So the US labor market jobs lost jobs in December for the first time in eight months, reflecting a plunge in restaurant employment uh, that highlights how surging coronavirus infections are taking greater toll on parts of the economy. So the US economy doesn't look like it's um, uh, recovering as well as, um, as expected. And uh, um, one of the things that will affect, um, I guess, uh, has an effect on, um, I guess, a recovering uh, US economy, um, or, or I should say a recession, is slumping US dollar. And the slumping US dollar is actually, regardless of what traders may think, uh, technical analysis traders uh, for an economy, a weaker currency, a devalued currency, a depreciating currency actually is desired in a uh, in a recession, right? So you don't want a an expensive currency because an expensive currency makes you less competitive. Um, and a slumping dollar creates problems for central banks elsewhere. So, you know, currency strength creates headwinds for economic recovery, right? Uh, Central banks may step in verbally to curtail to curtail a sense. So the euro and the yen are flirting with valuations unseen for years, as dollar weakness creates headaches for policymakers all uh, the world over. Granted, the uh, the path higher may be rocky, as seen with the greenback pairing its decline Wednesday morning in New York. Uh, on haven demands after the New York Stock Exchange reversed course and said it still plans to uh, delist three major Chinese companies. Um, that really isn't relevant, so you know, to, to the slumping dollar too much. But just understand that uh, a, a, a trade um, uh, shorting the dollar, the general consensus is to short the dollar, but the dollar won't be a short forever because, as I say. Um, the uh, devalued currency actually boosts exports um, and uh, the dollar will have its stay in the sun at some point but for now it is um, uh, uh, a sell I think and <clears throat> also as well be aware that the euro and the yen may have to do more then just talk the currency down they may have to actually implement um, you know stimulus measures in order to actually weaken their currency to help their economies if their economies you know start to uh, um, not really uh, get out the recovery phase and going on to the euro euro area economic confidence rises despite new virus curbs so unlike the us <clears throat> the economic confidence i guess is more sentiment driven in the euro area picked up in december with manufacturers in particular showing resilience against the resurgent pandemic that's triggered tougher restrictions across the region. So uh, Europe um, uh, doing a bit better than the uh, than the US when it comes to uh, uh, economic sentiment anyway, not too sure about the GDP side of things, but the strength at the moment is with uh, the Euro and not really with the US dollar. So obviously that would mean potential uh, longs on the Euro dollar um, currency pair if we're looking at that from a fundamental perspective. Uh, Bank of England Governor Bailey warns Brexit will bring big economic losses. So central bank chief weighs into politically charged issue. Boris Johnson, our prime minister, government uh, has held trade deal with the EU. So Brexit deal has been done, but um, it seems like 
the uh, the Bank of England Governor Bailey um, is thinking that the Brexit deal will actually bring economic losses, which means a potential um, uh, a, a double dip recession is what they're talking about in the UK. We're handling the virus um, quite poorly uh, when compared to uh, other countries as well. So although the pound has been on a, on an upward trajectory, potentially there is a shorting um, opportunity uh, coming definitely on the horizon very shortly. And um, the pound may fall versus the dollar amid recession risks, Credit Agricole says. So um, <clears throat> the pound is set to weaken against the US dollar as the UK faces risk of double dip recession and a rate cut by the Bank of England, according to Valentin Marinov, head of G10FX Research and Strategy at Credit Agricole. The current levels in cable are per potentially a good level to take profit, Marinov, on Bloomberg Markets said in the European Open. So um, although the dollar might be a uh, still potentially a sell against the euro doesn't it could be a buy against the pound the pound may be the worst of the uh, of the three currencies and um, when you have uh, currencies that are being devalued negative interest rates and falling uh, one of the uh, uh, assets to where well, that benefits from that is gold and silver and gold and silver tumble a little bit which we'll get into the technicals in a, in a little bit um, with higher yields dimming metal appeals so gold uh, I'm sure if you many of you saw this on Friday gold wiped out gains for the week and silver tumbled the most in September as US Treasury yields extended a rally and the dollar recovered but what you have to understand is that um, the dollar devaluation and currencies devaluation around the world um, is really not going to stop and plus we're talking about you know inflation coming back into the um, the uh, the market and what is inflation inflation is really um, a, de a devaluation and a weaker currency and a depreciating currency so or depreciating prices so although gold may tumble in the short term doesn't mean that um you know the, the gold uh, long trade uh, sentiment is over it just means that you can buy gold now and silver if you're looking for a bargain price this is now the time potentially to buy obviously this is not financial advice um but uh, if you are looking to buy gold obviously you want a pullback and this may be an opportunity to uh, get involved long gold on a pullback so looking at this week's um the week ahead the calendar really the important news this week for the do uh, for the dollar is really you got core inflation on wednesday and inflation rate um the higher this goes um the, the, the forecast actually is is for 1.2 so it doesn't look like it's really going anywhere um but again anything above that will be um <clears throat> I guess dollar um, uh, uh, positive or negative, depending on how you you want to uh, trade the dollar. Uh, Friday, the fifteenth of January, we've got pound trade balance um, is important, and then uh, into the week after, I think we've got. Uh, I think there's really nothing else this week that's really important on the uh, on trading economics. Let me go to two stars and see if there's anything there. A bit more. Um, Monday, we've got Australia, Bank of England speaks, nothing really. Tuesday, short openings, nothing really market moving. President Lagarde speaks, um, industrial production. Let me see, oil, trade oil, okay, monthly statement. I think maybe something like the um, GDP growth may be important for, for, for Germany and for Europe if, if, if Germany uh, GDP is up then that would be actually quite positive for the whole of Europe as Germany are uh, Europe's powerhouse uh, jobless claims. I think um, import and export prices are, are, are quite important as well for inflation. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. What have we got on the Friday? Uh, consumer sentiment, business, industrial production, nothing really market moving overall. Trade balance is quite important as well because uh, again, that, that um, helps with uh, GDP, a healthy trade balance um, uh, pushes GDP up. So uh, nothing really major that I can see on the uh, on the um, on the week ahead. Uh, so 
let's see anyways um, now getting into the technicals and starting off as we always do on the dollar index and dollar index dollar index um, we've got some uh, you know a bit of a pullback I'm expecting a pullback on the dollar index to be fair because um, we've literally been in this downtrend since uh, for pretty much the whole since since March you've pretty much seen dollar decline and especially when you get quite steep uh, uh, moves to the downside with no major pullbacks at some point prices may want to pull back um, or should pull back uh, because uh, prices don't go down forever right you've got you know liquidity problems etc if there's not enough liquidity to the downside then the price then um, the markets will look for liquidity to the upside to get short so for me i think the first area to look for any kind of short trades not necessarily on the uh, dollar index you'd be looking for this is just confluence on a dollar cross would be put it somewhere around there where you've got supply but you've also got a level of you know support and resistance so um, support and resistance adds to the supply and demand zone equation at a level and understanding why there's likely to be more supply at that area technically than demand and that's all confluence is is just looking at why there's likely to be more sell orders or supply orders than buy orders or demand orders at an area from a technical analysis perspective yeah but we must always take into account um, uh, the fundamentals because the fundamentals are really uh, what drives prices to where they are going to go in the medium to long term short term is more more to do with uh, liquidity and really kind of market making um, moving on to the dollar yen the dollar yen um, prices have come up to a bit of a supply zone here so if you are looking to get uh, short on the dollar long on the Japanese yen here is actually a decent level to look for any kind of short trades providing again that you want to be shorting the dollar and long the uh, Japanese yen you'd probably want to be long the Japanese yen in a risk off environment meaning that when there's a lot of uncertainty and fear in the market the the money tends to flow into the Japanese yen but also when you're trading the Japanese yen look for a sell-off in the stock market as well for some confluence that there is definitely some risk off sentiment coming into the market there's also another level I think up top around here let me, just, let me zoom out I think there is probably something more around there I think that is a decent level where you've got some uh, support, 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 bit of support there and a bit of resistance to the underside there. So yeah, that's where we are now. And then you've got another area, probably some localized resistance, probably at the top where you've got daily rejections there level resistance resistance and so this 104 770 area is probably where the uh, second area of support and resistance may be I'm going to drag that up slightly a little bit um, and that would be if you want to get short if you want to get long on the dollar I think this um, this area here is actually decent for a potential long dollar we've been trending down for a while so we could enter into a ranging market if prices do come down into that demand zone prices have proved that there is definitely you know the, the dollar at the moment 102 is a, is a bargain move 200 pips up you know broke some uh, some su previous supply there so what you're looking for is uh, maybe a pullback and then understanding that we could potentially be um, buying at another bargain area for the dollar looking at the dollar Swiss and the dollar Swiss um, so far uh, we've just had a bit of a pullback into a nice supply zone so again potential shorts going on anywhere around here I personally if I was looking to get shorts again looking at that area there of level of, of resistance Let me zoom out a little bit There's nothing really I would say that's the level of resistance I would look to get short 
and so a bit more of a pullback for me before looking at any kind of short trades if you're looking at getting long there is some demand here but not necessarily the strongest area of demand at the moment i probably want prices to really kind of move maybe even past that supply zone before even thinking about getting long on the dollar um I think that's it for now. Your dollar CAD. So looking at dollar CAD, again, we've got supply here, but not the strongest area of supply to be fair. And you're buying really, if you're looking to buy the Canadian dollar by shorting this currency pair, you know, that's really not the, the greatest level, I think. And this this one two eight uh five to one two nine five area uh supply zone for me is a really nice area to look for short trades plus potential confluence of support and resistance right here that is quite nice that the top end of that that supply zone right there is decent for a potential short if you're looking at again long trades i wouldn't even look at long trades right now um, i really would want price to prove that there is value for the dollar against the canadian dollar uh, first before thinking about getting uh, long and then wait for it to pull back into that area and then look for any kind of long trades moving on to the new zealand dollar us dollar and um we're getting a bit of a pullback finally but again we're still quite in, in a bit of an expensive area when it comes to the new zealand dollar us dollar um i my bias is to the long side but i want to see a deeper pullback before getting long there are some levels that you could potentially look at again for confluence uh, there is a bit of support and resistance horizontal support and resistance um, in that area there and you've got a little bit probably on the top there and then the bottom end right there so those are the areas potentially for long trades again I'm not really too keen on this uh, this this area if it comes down to that demand zone there it could work nobody really knows exactly which level is going to work but if it doesn't you get an entry trigger brilliant um, but personally I'd prefer to really want to buy a bit of a, uh, a cheaper price to one 0 0.71 area especially that 0 0.70 area if prices can pull back to that zone there that for me is a nice buy um, again not financial advice pound dollar we've got a very very wide area of demand and when you get again wide areas of demand what you want to do is just basically break up the zone using support and resistance you've got a level of um resistance there but resistance there 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 you can see it where prices kind of went above came back and it bounced up so decent and then you've also got another area within that wide area of demand which is basically that zone right there and then you've got another area right here where you've got support and resistance um with the pound potentially weakening against the um uh, the dollar you could see prices start to you know fall and if they do then this actually would be a pullback to you know some sort of supply would be a really really nice uh short but it depends on uh what happens to the price of um the british pound and whether you really want to be even be a buyer of the dollar um at the moment so um fundamentally i'm not too keen on this uh, currency pair at all but it could pr provide uh, some decent um uh, uh trading opportunities in the next uh, week or two moving on to the euro dollar the euro dollar has come back down into this demand zone we made higher highs higher lows and now uh, potentially there could be a trade but again similar to i think it was the new zealand dollar um for me it's you're really kind of buying at the high of the market consider this you know to be the absolute low and you can see prices have really made higher highs higher lows if this is a bargain area this is cheap yeah this has got to be expensive so for me i probably want a bit more of a pullback before looking at getting uh long on this currency pair which my bias is to the long side for now so again a bit of a pullback into some confluence right there um zooming out i think the next major confluence would probably be around this uh one uh, 0.19 area um, there are probably some lower 
support and resistance uh, zones in here, but um, I'll go over that with um, the private Discord members group as well as all the other uh, technical analysis tools that we use to identify the strongest areas of, um, of, of demand. This is just a couple of, uh, you know, um, uh, tools that we use but there's a there's a lot more that we uh, actually look at to identify the strongest areas of demand and supply so um euro dollar for me fundamentally is a buy um but uh, there are you know there is there probably maybe a sell trade you can look at this area of supply here not the strongest area of supply um but if it starts to you know come down a bit more into this zone then that's an opportunity potentially to short the uh, the euro and buy the uh, the US dollar but again waiting for proof of value that I don't like that supply zone not yet anyway it needs to come down prove that it's a strong area of supply and then um, that for me if I was looking to get short on that US dollar um, from a technical analysis perspective that would be the trade um, euro yen and euro yen has come up to this uh, this quite uh, uh, supply zone that kind of started in uh, 20 March 2019 so for me recent supply it's gone above that I'd really want for me to kind of short this area again for price to prove that there is supply there then a pull back to that zone and then I'm looking at potentially shorting <clears throat> as well as looking for uh, a risk off environment because like I said the Japanese yen would benefit in a risk off environment it doesn't mean that prices can't pull back they can pull back even in a risk on environment depending on what's going on with the euro uh, fundamentally but for me um, this pair is a bit more of a difficult read if I was to you know take any kind of trade on this it would have to be to the upside bit of a pullback to any kind of demand and then look for any uh, any long trades uh, when it comes to support and resistance I think there's just a localized one right here that kind of stands out around that zone there zoom out nothing really major so more of a localized support zone that had been used so decent but this would be the, the best area to look for for me anyway a nice long trade around here that one two four price zone um, is decent for a long euro yen trade moving on to the Australian dollar uh, US dollar and again really buying at the highs is um, you've got to, you know be very cautious because again if you have a move that really hasn't had any major pullbacks you know no major pullbacks then um, at some point the market has to you know find the liquidity so potentially we could see prices come down even break that zone if it does break that zone brilliant for me I'm looking for some long trades and I think if we're looking at any kind of uh, major levels of confluence within those demand zones I think that zone right there is decent and I think probably the 75 area is decent as well there is another zone up top that 76 30 level so intraday that could be decent because you've got enough you know trades to the upside let's say for example that's your risk is your risk potentially a few pips maybe about 30 pips you've got enough trade trading room to the upside to make uh, you know some decent pips so um, yeah that's that's decent but again personally uh, I would want prices to really kind of uh, come really further down a bit further down before looking at because my potential upside is even more uh, from, a, from a pip uh, perspective so Australian dollar buyers pretty much all the way for me for now but um, again I'm quite choosy with my levels so um, I'll have to do a bit more analysis with the private members in order to uh, to establish the uh, the exact you know zones I'm looking at uh, Australian dollar yen again we've just had this tear due to risk on vaccine global recovery and you're seeing 
um, you know, prices make higher highs, higher lows. Anyone who says that fundamentals doesn't work doesn't have a clue what they're talking about. And I wonder if they are really currency traders anyway. You know, what I mean, a proper just technical analysis traders doesn't mean you're a currency trader because how can you be a currency trader and not know um, things like interest rates, inflation, GDP, and how it affects exchange rates? But um, pulling back to a demand zone. Yeah, is again the, the 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 play and a risk on environment, but again, just understanding where you want to be uh, potential uh, buying. I would probably say you've got that area there. You've got uh, what's the most obvious, obvious zone? Probably at the bottom end of that zone as well. I'm probably think that there might be something around here as well right there so for me i think these areas here that's 79 and then just below that would be maybe the first areas to look for potential buys you've definitely got at least 100 pips to the upside 150 pips to the upside if this is an expensive area if that's an expensive area then prices should come back down to around here and then you've got 150 to the upside potentially if price does react off that level nobody knows what level exactly is going to react off but if it does and we get like a little entry trigger around here and we do some more confluence uh technical analysis wise um then we uh then we can look for potential trades on this uh, currency pair and looking at gold so on friday massive move down um the dollar had some uh, terrible news yet that the, the uh that gold went you know to the to the downside and that just basically leads me to believe that this is a big old liquidity hunt that's all this is um prices have actually come down to a nice cheaper area if you think about where you are from zoom out a little bit this was obviously seen as a bargain area right this area here prices went to the high and now this is seen as expensive so between an expensive area and a bargain area is fair value which would be somewhere around here and so we're actually below fair value so this is more the bargain territory yeah 50 percent yeah between a high and a low is known as fair value so now fair value for gold is somewhere around here and then it's now just looking for potential entries if that works brilliant if it doesn't work it's okay as long as you understand fundamentally why you're buying gold and you wait for prices to come down to the absolute bargain area and there look at your potential upside if you're right about gold being um, uh, devalued or buying a bargain area around here um, around the 1780 price 17 17 17 60 yeah and you're right and prices continue to go higher and reach the all-time high look at the risk and look at the reward so um, don't chase price if you understand um value value is not price and price is not value what this let what this is basically doing is drawing traders into the short side which basically is, is creating liquidity um and uh yeah those traders will probably get caught maybe on the wrong side of the of the um of the gold long trade if you know prices start to do something like that etc but again nobody knows just an idea um and we just basically you know do our fundamental analysis and uh, see how the uh, uh, it plays out in the uh, future so um, that's it for now again um, I hope you enjoyed the analysis uh, don't forget to like subscribe share and if you do want to become a member of the discord group you can for literally 99p a day head over to the um, trading 180 website and take a look and uh, really get in-depth analysis on supply and demand nothing that you will never see on youtube apart from my channel and there's lots of things that you don't see on my channel that i show to the uh, private members group anyways guys take care and i will speak to you soon